In the old web, the URL was an important part of every application. You could bookmark them, share them, navigate through the app, and they were an easy way to control the state of your application. But currently, with the introduction of UI frameworks and SPAs, the URL moved into memory and became decorative for most applications. There is an amazing library called Nox that makes handling URLs feel like handling normal state. It makes URL parsing, validation, and updating very easy. It's a type safe search params state manager for React. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you all of its capabilities. To start with the tutorial, just create a simple React application using Vit. Select React here and select TypeScript plus React Compiler. Hit No, hit Yes here and wait for packages to be installed. Perfect. Now we need to just simply need to install the Nox package itself using npm install Nox. Perfect. If you head over to the Nox documentation here, you're gonna see the packages and libraries supported by this library. And here simply we are using React SPA and we just need to wrap our application inside a Nox adapter here. So let's do it. Just head over to the main.tsx file here and here just wrap everything inside the Nox provider, sorry, adapter and wrap everything inside the and just make sure that you're importing it from the current location. Now head over to the app component here, remove it here. We don't need CSS and logos here. Perfect. Then I just need to import from Nox library here a simple hook called use query state and as you can see here there are many other useful hooks that we're gonna learn it in this tutorial so let's start with use query state. hit save and like a normal react user state i'm gonna create a variable and it's setter and instead of using user state i just simply use use query state that we imported from above and also we can specify an initial value like this and to use it i just simply use an input field here of type text for the value of it, I just simply pass name, but don't forget to default it to an empty string because it might be null. And for the unchanged handler here, I just simply set name with the value of event.target value here. Again, just run the development server. But before that, let me just remove unnecessary files from here. And inside your browser, if you type anything inside this input here, you're gonna see that the URL of the application is gonna be updated reactively. Now again, if we head over to the app.tsx file, as the second argument of use query a state hook here, you can pass other options according to your requirements. For example, I can set history push. If you want to simulate, for example, a navigation, a style URL change, like opening or closing a model, but do not use this option for URL changes that are not related to navigation. There are other options like a scroll and you can set it to true or false whenever a URL change happens or clear on default. It means that if we set the URL into null, it's gonna be completely removed from URL to make URL less clutter. It means that if the value in the URL is set to null, you're not gonna see it at all. Also, there is another option called default value and you can set it to whatever that you want. It means that if I set the URL into something null, instead of removing it, the URL is going to be something like this, which you can use it according to your needs. This was one of the ways that you can customize the options. Also, if you head over to our global adapter, you can also globally overwrite all of the default options here with the similar options that we just saw. Also, there is a third way to customize the options here. When you are calling a setter function here, you can pass a second argument and you can override again the default options of use query a state hook. Let me just comment this part here. And again, I'm gonna create the name set name as before, but there is another way to customize the behavior of your query state which is a builder pattern and it's very similar to you and i really prefer it but before that we need to talk about parsers provided by nox itself and i'm gonna explain them in details in a few moments but for now just know that you can convert and parse values inside the 
URL which are by default a string into values that we want. For example, Boolean, JSON, integer, and many other different possible parser. But for now, just import the parse as a string. And here as a second argument, instead of passing an object here, just pass the parse as a string here and use builder pattern. Instead of setting default value, like previous example, you can set it with default and pass whatever that you want. And also you can specify other options like this and many different possibilities that I'm going to tell you now. Let me just remove this bit options method here. And there's another useful parser called parse as integer. And you can provide default value of zero or whatever that you want. There is another one called parse as float. And because the Nux is type safe by default, you can hover over the values and you see the correct corresponding type here. The age is of type number because we parse it as integer and the amount also is of type number because we converted it to float. Also, there is another one called parse as index. The difference between this and integer is that if the value inside the URL is zero, the Nux is going to convert it to one. And if it is two, it's going to convert it to three and so on. And this is very useful for pagination related stuff. If you have parsers for Boolean, which is self-explanatory. Also, there's parsers for string literals and also you can infer the type of it to make your application more type safe and use it inside the use query state like previous example now let me just turn off the unused variables errors here and if you hover over it you can see accepts active and inactive string and by this useful utility you can use it directly inside your typescript code also there is number literals like this it's similar to previous example there are date parsers here and you can see the type as expected is date or null because the url might be empty and also if you want to parse the date inside url without the time zone offset we can use this value use this parser to make it utc and the last parser is for parsing into an array and here because i have passed parse as integer the resulting array type is going to be of type number array now that we have learned use query state hook there's another useful hook called use query states instead of a state if you have a big state that the values inside it must move together you can use this useful hook also so to use it here down below imagine that we have an object of coordinates coordinates and it's setter and use use query states here and for the values inside it for example imagine that we have a lat and we're going to parse it as float because it's reasonable with the default value of wherever and for the longitude simply as before i'm going to parse it float with the default value of random place and as before in the second option you can pass other options you want we don't need them anymore and now you can simply extract the values of coordinates like this and also you can set them all at once together to your desired value in a very type safe way also you can make it a global custom hook and you can for example let me just show you in an example here i just simply create a new hook called use coordinates and simply wrap this hook inside it let me just do these and simply i return latitude and launch it like this and also you can extract the set coordinates and return it here perfect these were the primitive parsers provided by nox engine itself but we can go further and use the parse as json parser here and we can combine it with zod or other runtime validation libraries to enhance the developer experience and type safety of your application so let me just install the zod package itself but before that, just keep in mind that you can use Zod, Yoop, and other validation libraries according to your preference. Just check out the documentation itself. Perfect. Now again, run the development server. And here, just to show you an example, I just simply create product schema or whatever. And I'm going to import the Zod and with the builder pattern here. I'm going to define the shape of my product. My product is going to have 
a name of type a string a price of type number and with the description of type a string as expected and as you can see here we have the full power of zot here and to use it combined with nox i'm just simply create the corresponding state here use query state just pass the name of the key of your json object in the url and as a parser just pass the parse as json and for its validation and custom parser just pass the custom product schema that we just created earlier and as you can see here the product type has been inferred correctly and also we can set our product according to the definition of it. to show you in action i just simply create a button called update product and on the onclick handler of it i just simply pass the set product and for the name of it i just simply pass watch description or whatever the watch description and for the price of it just whatever that you and here inside the application if i click on update product we can see that beautifully the product object in the url has been updated according to the thing that others i just passed here also i can create another button called for example clear and the unclick of it i just simply set product into something null and here if i click on clear see that the product completely has been removed from the url and to summarize we talked about all of the concepts of nox library we talked about parsers inferrers use query state use query states and how to combine it with zot library itself if you have any question regarding this tutorial just ask it in the comments down below and don't forget to like and subscribe thanks for watching see you in the next video